Hello VC. Uh, thought I'd do another recent vinyl spins for you uh, before our holiday weekend closes here in the United States. Uh, it's been Memorial Day and I've had a chance to spin a few records anyway while my family was out. Um, anyway, I hope everyone is doing well. I've had the opportunity to watch a little, a few videos this weekend, which was nice, uh, but it's been relatively busy for me. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short, and the last video went over 20 minutes, and I hate going over 20 minutes because uh, I think, you know, watching TED Talks and stuff like that, you know, the best amount of time, at least in terms of like the 17 minutes, I'd like to keep it at Chris at Dixieland Farm short, but I'm not that good yet. So, um, hopefully this will be about 17 minutes or so, I hope it won't shoot over that, but anyway. I showed this guy in my previous video. Um, I did have a chance to clean this up and spin it, and it is wonderful. Um, so this is Jimmy Smith at the Organ, uh, Volume 1. This was recorded in 1957. Uh, Jimmy Smith at the time with Blue Nut, I think he recorded like eight albums worth of material in 1957. And uh, Mosaic issued a, a nice box set just on his 1957 work. but. Uh, this, as far as I'm aware, has never been issued on compact disc or digitally uh, outside of that mosaic box set, but uh, it was really, really nice just to hear this. Um, my copy is probably about BG, so the first track, which is Summertime, uh, which is just uh, a track with uh, Jimmy Smith and Lou Donaldson, um, had a lot of clicks and ticks and pops in it, but you know, it didn't, at first it was a little bit annoying, but it didn't take away from the music and uh, the rest of the album and the second side uh, was just phenomenal. Um, really bluesy, if you're into bluesy jazz and you see this guy, pick it up, it, it's worth your time. And you know, this is volume one, there is a volume two, so I'm gonna try and hunt that down if I can. Uh, I just happened to pop on eBay uh, tonight, and I saw that there was one that was going for 70 bucks, which is a little bit more than what I wanted to spend. Um, so I, I showed the label in my previous video, but uh, this was uh, on the 47 West 63rd uh, version of the label. So this is a uh, an original mono pressing on micro groove of course you see micro groove up on top here and you also see there's an indentation on the inner ring here which is a symbolic of a micro groove record um, very thick vinyl very pleased with it um, covers a little bit shot but I'm happy I have the music so um, again one day I hope music matters will reissue this. For some reason, Music Matters and even Blue Dot itself um, for their 75th anniversary has not chosen to reissue any Jimmy Smith records, so I don't know if it's a problem with the family or, or the estate. Um, I'm almost tempted to uh, email Ron Rombach at uh, Music Matters to see, hey, what's going on? Maybe he just doesn't care for Jimmy Smith and wants to focus on other stuff. But If I happen to get a good story on it, I'll pass it on to you guys. Uh, this previous week, I got the, the two newest uh, Music Matters releases in the mail, and the first one is uh, The Amazing Bud Pal. The scene changes, and, you know, in terms of Blue Note Photography by Francis Wolfe, this is one of my favorite covers, because a nice shot of uh, Bud Pal and his son just kind of looking over his shoulder, just a really nice, intimate, candid shot with this uh, muted blue tone, but and beautiful photography of the players. So this is just a trio session uh, with Paul Chambers and Art Taylor. Um, and, you know, it, it swings. Uh, it's a little bit bluesy at times, so if you're looking for kind of a nice transition uh, record from uh, bebop into hard bop, this would be one to go for. Um, they did a Again, phenomenal job replicating the original label. Uh, this one was on uh, the 47th West 63rd, too. 
Of course, if it was original, it would have micro groove up on top, but it had uh, stereo. Well, maybe they did have stereo, I'm sorry. It's the mono that might have micro groove, so not 100% on that. I'll have to check that in my next video. Uh, but anyway, this is a good listen. Uh, the first Bud Powell record uh, by Music Matters. I don't think Bud Powell has been reissued since uh, Classic Records uh, did some Blue Note stuff in the late 90s, early 2000s. The other release, uh, which is really nice, has been out of print on the 45 RPM edition for the longest time, and so they redid it on 33 and a third. And this is just a wonderful session by Grant Green. Out of the inner cover. This was recorded in 64, but did not come out until uh, Michael Kuskuna, which is a, um, in terms of jazz historians, Michael Kuskuna is the guy. He knows everything about everything about jazz. Um, he unearthed this and then released it in the 80s and he did the the liner notes down here and the original cover wasn't that great uh, I have the original on CD and the cover is done by a Japanese artist and I think they're kind of doing a take of the Andy Warhol type covers uh, but the uh, Music Matters team uh, Chris Moosedale I think it is you know found an original Francis Wool photo tried to Follow the same thing, did a red tone here, it just did a phenomenal job. And uh, this is a wonderful session. It uses uh, Bob Cranshaw and then uh, John Coltrane's backers at the time. So uh, uh, Elvin, uh, Elvin Jones and McCoy Tyner, sorry, can't think straight today. Um, so, you know, McCoy Tyner and Elvin Jones, they were doing a lot of work for John Coltrane at the time. And so, um, Alfred Lyon just happened to use them for a lot of sessions for Blue Note at the same time, and they grabbed them for this Grant Green session. And, you know, one of the tracks of the cover is My Favorite Things, and, you know, that's one of John Coltrane's standards. So, and he does a wonderful job playing, you know, My Favorite Things, just like Coltrane did on his sax. So, uh, definitely worth checking out if you can get it. 45 RPM again is out. And while I'm on the topic of this, um, one of the recent discoveries that I found this week is, so I did a search of Blue Note on the iTunes store, and I found out that they had a podcast in 2014. And the podcast is wonderful. So they, they did a podcast per month. Michael Cuscona does some of them, and so does Don Wass, the president of Blue Note now and they do like an hour session and they feature like one session is totally de dedicated to Horace Silver, another one to Art Blakey, uh, another one to Joe Lovano, uh, I want to say Grant Green was another one but I can't remember off the top of my head so the podcasts are free so you get like an hour of you know Don Wass or Michael Cuscono talking about one of the musicians and you get a set of tracks as they progress through the albums through the years and of course they're looking for musicians that had like a wealth of material you can not do like a John Coltrane because he only did one album for Blue Note uh, but definitely worth checking it out um, if you can so there's kind of a screenshot of what, uh, what the format looks like in terms of the podcast so this is going to be a mixed bag today so that was the jazz stuff that I've been playing uh, next up is a stoner metal album by Caius. So they were a California desert rock band in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, this is Blues for the Red Sun, which was their third album. If you like stoner rock, definitely check this out. The vinyl, though, is kind of interesting. So we're in the CD period. So a lot of the CDs, they're going over 40 minutes in length so this one I think you know, is about 51 minutes so the optimal length for 
LPs, cutting LPs. If you you uh, uh, listen to some of the famous folks that that cut some of the lacquers, they will tell you it's about 17 minutes worth of music. So 17 minutes worth of music. If you go over that, you're really putting the grooves closer and closer together. And so for this one, you could really really tell um, that you know they you know they really had to mute the sound down so you don't get so much dynamics on this record which is something you would expect for a metal record so it's funny because I, I swung from listening to Grant Green to this record yeah complete change of pace and it was funny because the Grant Green record was louder than this stoner metal record and so this is not an original pressing, this is a uh, German press uh, that came out, I think, in the early 2000s. Uh, it's not bad. Um, happy to have it on vinyl, but, you know, in terms of dynamics, uh, the CD is much better. And so I think what triggered me to play Caius is I just watched Sonic Highways, which had an episode on Los Angeles, and Caius was featured. Caius features Josh Homme of Queens of the Stone Age and them Crooked Vultures with Dave Grohl. So it was kind of cool to see the interview and them talking about Caius the band and how they go out in the desert and with just with the generator and play with the band. And so they had these desert parties. So really kind of cool. If you're into stoner rock, definitely uh, check it out. Now, swinging from metal. We're going to go to an electronic uh, dance lounge, you know. This is After Dark, which is uh, featured from Late Night Tales. So After Dark is their kind of uh, evening dance house type sessions, which um, are put together by Bill Brewster. Uh, if you're not familiar with Bill Brewster, he's pretty famous in the DJ communities. He's written several books. Um, one of them is uh, Last Night a DJ Saved My Life, which uh, is the history of DJing, starting from you know the beginning of radio up till now. Uh, the other one is How to DJ Properly. So, uh, kind of an interesting book if you're into DJing. Uh, you can pick this up relatively cheaply. It gives you a lot of Tips if you're an aspiring DJ or you just want to learn a few trips, uh, tricks and, and tips from some of the professional guys. There's a lot of quotes from folks like Fatboy Slim in this, but uh, going back to it, uh, Late Night Tales has an interesting video with Bill Brewster uh, talking about the first cut or the first edition of this record, which is just a four track EP. Um, personally, I think the first one that he put out was probably his best. And then the second one was eh, it was mediocre. This one is a little bit return to the form, but not as good as the first album. And uh, it features uh, a lot of folks that I'm not familiar with. Um, and he, he grabs, uh, here's kind of a shot of the, the folks that are on this. He grabs records from all over the place. And so like Plastic Breton, a French band, um, I've heard other tracks by Plastic Breton. This one wasn't my favorite, but I can understand why he incorporated it into the mix. So um, I'll include a link down to the interview with him. Uh, really kind of a eccentric type guy, but uh, very interesting in how he chooses to put things together. This does flow very well. So uh, definitely recommend picking it up. Um, mastered at MPO, which is a French uh, mastering. And he got nice uh, boutique labels, and of course it's a 2LP set. And you get a download code for a unmixed version of this album. So uh, I highly recommend checking it out if you can. Kind of sticking on the electronic uh, dance uh, trip hop type sound. This is Larry uh, Future Deutsche Welle, uh, which is Future German Wave. Um, this is 
right if you like massive attack. Um, I really enjoyed this. Uh, what was nice about this guy is it came with a CD which had instrumental cuts. So if you're a fan of massive attack, uh, definitely check them out. Now, the vinyl is very interesting on this guy. So, I wish I had a camera that would do it justice, but uh, you put it on the turntable and it's almost like a uh, zoetrope. So it uh, makes a picture and so you can see each of the frames of her hand moving. Now I'm a, not a big fan of picture discs uh, because you get a fair amount of surface noise when you play it and this is no different. I mean it's kind of a cool cool feature uh, to have a picture disc. Here's the other disc, kind of the same thing. And you get to see her turning. Um, but once the music starts to kick in, you kind of uh, the, the surface noise goes away. But it, it's really evident when you put the needle on the record. But if you're into trip trip hop, uh, I can't recommend this enough. Uh, I found this to be really really enjoyable. It came with this uh, nice nice inner. Of course, everything is in German. Uh, so, if you're okay with a record that is not in English, then you can stay away. But if you're into, you don't care, or after the music, then definitely check it out. I recommend it. I got one more thing to show. And so, this one I was extremely happy about. This is an electronic uh, musician. Uh, he was classified as New Age, and he's been doing stuff since the 70s, and this is Steve Roach with Skeleton Keys. This is his first uh, vinyl release in over 25 years. So he did this. There, it's had a, a pressing of about 400. That's how many they pressed. And he just happened to autograph mine per request. I got it from his website. Very excited to get this. So what does it sound like? So if you're into Klaus Schultz, Schultze, uh, during the 80s when Angst came out, uh, this might be up your alley. So it's all modular sense. It was uh, recorded pure analog, uh, pressed to disc, pure analog, no digital involved, which was nice. Sounds wonderful. And uh, He is offering a nice uh, package online where you get a CD version and the CD, it's basically a two-disc two set, so you get it reworked for 2015. Now, I wouldn't say this is my favorite album by Steve Roach. I'm more into his ambient type works, and this is not at all ambient. So here's kind of a picture of the guy now. And a picture of him when, and back in 93. Um, so his ambient works, I like uh, when he was doing a lot of work in about 86 up till about uh, 98. He did a lot of wonderful ambient works, and he still does today. I mean, the guy is extremely pro prolific. I mean, he comes out with like four albums per year. And you can get a lot of exclusive stuff through his website, so I can't recommend it enough. But anyway, that's what I've been spending this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. And have a great weekend, everybody. Or a great week, sorry. My mind is still on my weekend. So have a great week, everyone.